Actually, be recorded on that little disc right in there. Thank <laughs> you. 
It is now, now uh, well, excuse me, now 9.30, um, and this meeting is called Order. We have a missing gavel, so... <laughs> uh, <laughs> seriously, I looked. I'm sure it's somewhere. Um, okay, uh, we've established a quorum. We have uh, four board members here. Um, I'd like to everybody stand for a moment of... Silence and reflection. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance, please. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Please be seated. Well, welcome everybody. I think this is the most people I've ever seen at a board meeting, except for the one about uh, open carry. <laughs> Uh, as you know, this is, uh, this is Dustin Smith, who was working on the day of the special meeting, and uh, uh, he was unable to take the pledge. We did um, take the pledge from him in writing, but we'd like to um, do it today in front of our membership. Dustin? Raise your right hand, please. No, you're going to need it. <laughs> I, Dustin Smith, do solemnly swear that I will uphold and support the declarations of protective restrictions, bylaws, and regulations governing the, the administration of Fort Clark Springs. I further swear that I will represent the interests of the membership to the best of my ability, so help me God. Thank you, Dustin. Good for you. Uh, yeah. I'd also like to introduce uh, Julie Moreno. She's our new human resources and... Um, Jack of all trades. <laughs> She's going to be taking the minute meeting notes today. So please welcome her as well. Right. Okay, the first on the agenda is approval of minutes from the board meeting on January 15, 2020. And our secretary, Robert Mummy, will discuss those. Uh, there are a few typographical errors that need to be, and grammatical errors that need to be fixed in them, but they seem fine. I, uh, maybe they'd be approved as submitted. Do I have a second? I'll second it. All in favor of approving as submitted except for typographical and spelling corrections. Raise your hand, please. The unanimous vote. Okay, the second is the approval of the minutes of a special meeting on February 1st, 2020. Robert? Uh, I've gone through those. I did not find any typographical errors or misspelled <laughs> words. Um, I think they'd be approved as written. I found only one small one where it says uh, should be the remaining directors. It says the reaming directors. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just an audience yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, That so, just needs to be... So let's change that. Okay, we'll <laughs> change that, but the substance... Substance was good. Okay, can yes. I have a motion, please? I move that we accept the minutes of the special meeting as submitted with the correction of reaming to remaining. <laughs> I second the motion. And all in favor? Raise your hand. Okay, the motion passes unanimously. Okay, uh, secretary's report. Uh, we have one correspondence that came in through email. Um, let me go ahead and read that to you. It says, I as a member support the pool fee. Without the fee, the pool would be full of people who do not live on the fort. Those people are always trashing the place. We as members would have to pick it up. Why would we want to let people who do not pay a membership to use our facility? We have lived in many HOAs. None of them are free. Nothing is free in life. If you want, if you want it, let me do that again. If you want it, you need to work for it. Okay. Um, we have a motion. Oh, never mind. We don't need. It. Yeah. Actually, we don't need an approval for secretary's report for correspondence. Uh, treasury's report. I have an announcement to wait to make. Um, in light of the treasury's report, you notice he's not here. Yesterday afternoon, and I talked to him in the evening, and uh, Jim Race has chosen to resign from the board. Oh, no. uh, he said that uh, he did not anticipate that uh, it would require so much time, and unfortunately with a new board, uh, no executive officer, and um, he was spending 
many, many hours working with our both our local CPA and our auditor, and uh, it was a lot more than he thought that uh, he was getting himself into. He did an incredible job. He is very knowledgeable. He is one of the very few directors that we've had on the board. In the 10 years I've been here, I don't think there's been one that was as um, experienced in financial and fiscal um, skills like he was. Um, we're going to miss him, but this is a decision only he could make. So um, we will be appointing another board member. However, there's three remaining names <coughs> on the list. And at the special meeting, the members were asked specifically whether we should take names from that list if we needed them or start a new list and they overwhelmingly and very loudly said to use the same list. Now we don't know if those three remaining on that list are still even interested. So until we contact them and to discuss the qualifications, we won't be making an appointment, at least today. But we will keep everybody apprised of progress on that. and. Uh, I want to thank Jim for all the really good things he did, all of the uh, detailed uh, emails that he sent us, and so forth. However, there are profit and loss statements in the back. I did want to um, make a couple of corrections. Well, actually, our um, local, our CPA, Randy, uh, left it off. We are going back to showing at the end of the various um, profit and loss statements by building back in depreciation and bad debt. Depreciation and bad debt are not cash flow items. Uh, they affect the bottom line. They're both accounting uh, items that are required by U.S. accounting law. However, they're not cash. Bad debt, of course, is stuff that we're trying to collect. Some of it goes way back to when Mendelssohn signed over the development to the Homeowners Association. Bad debt means we don't have to pay federal income tax. So anyway, I've added, uh, you can look, look at it, and um, under profit and loss for Fort Clark Springs, they showed a loss of $12,061.31. If you add back in depreciation and bad debt, it shows cash ahead of $25,014.84. That's for the month of uh, January. Then for October 2019 through January tw uh, 2020, we show a $15,391.87 if you add back in depreciation of $54,567.18, bad debt $91,998.00, you come up with plus cash flow $131,173.31. We will have more. Um, I did not have time after last night to uh, do anything else other than that, so I apologize for that. If you, any um, P&Ls that aren't picked up, we'll leave in the front office for you guys to go over. Our audit is on track, and um, being on track, we should have it for everybody by the annual meeting on March 28th, Coast Theater, 10 o'clock. So that's the treasurer's report. I move that we accept the treasurer's report. Second. All in favor? Okay. Now I'm going to bore you to death. Okay, we don't have a general manager or an executive officer to give a president's report, I mean, an officer's report. So I'm just going to kind of summarize what we've been doing for the last two weeks. And please bear with me, I will I will read it because it's faster, I don't have to think. And um, we'll go from there. First of all, I want to thank all of you for all of your support. We're all uh, brand new. Rihanna worked for us for how long? Okay. almost five years, uh, member services. She will add that to um, our experience on the board. Dustin, law enforcement, he's going to be able to help Matt and, uh, and uh, Philip on the hunt and on security. I have an insurance background, as you know, I handled the hail, hailstorm in 2016. And Robert's a teacher, skilled in photography and all kinds of interesting things. And 
hopefully internet also and <laughs> Facebook and all that. Okay. Um, just we don't have nameplates yet. Uh, Vice President Dustin Smith replaced Maria Perkins. His term expires on 321. Director uh, Rihanna Hay replaced Debbie Isaacs. Her term expires on 321. My term, I replaced Charles Kirby. My term expires on 321. Robert replaced Dan Sullivan, who resigned. His term expires on 322. And the replacement for Treasurer Jim Race, uh, his term will also expire on 322. And we thank all of them for all the work they did in the time that they were here. They did do a lot of really good things. Okay, um, in, in the future, short, in the short future, I hope, we'll be reviewing uh, club and committee agreements. Uh, clubs who believe that they have issues with their current agreements should um, put those issues in writing, turn them into any of us. We'll be reviewing the employee handbook to ensure it complies with state and federal employment law. We'll be again reviewing the rules and regulations. We know that there's a great deal of duplication in them. We might be able to eliminate some of the duplication. And there's one section that isn't in compliance with either Texas HOA law or our declaration. And it looks like an oversight, just a twist of wording, but it makes a big difference. For security reasons, we will be revising our director email addresses as soon as possible. For now, they remain the same. They, it may, other names may show up, but they're only going to us. Um, our new human resources person, Julie Moreno over here, she has access to constant contact and dispatch. But she's still trying to figure out all the fonts and the templates, although she's doing a pretty good job. But we'll get there. So some stuff on the dispatch looks like the letters are this big or, you know, spacing isn't right. Please be patient because we're trying, there's nobody there to instruct her. Um, the directors uh, we attended the last community council meeting. And uh, which I was happy to see had lots of people there. Uh, we want to establish a closer working relationship with the community council. They are a 501c3 nonprofit that provides educational and historical events and support, and they're also our members forum. We encourage all property owners to attend to voice their thoughts, good, bad, and indifferent. We're also reviewing the venues that uh, community council uses to try and make it as easy as possible to provide events for our members. <coughs> there are nonprofits, so every set counts. Everything we do benefits our property owners and therefore our guests, visitors. After the community council meeting, we met in an emergency executive session. We didn't have uh, access to dispatch to notify all of you that we were going to meet in an executive session, although it's closed. The purpose was to sign uh, bank documents, signature forms, uh, we all signed a confidentiality agreement, and that pledges that we will not release any employee or any member uh, information. It's uh, according to the Privacy Act. Um, we, also, uh, we also signed the Bylaws Code of Ethics. So we are all will follow the Bylaws Code of Ethics. Copies of state HOA law and our governing documents were supplied to each director to review. We discussed some organizational matters. We made no decisions and held no votes. We did take two email votes. First one was to allow community council to have their Fort Clark Days fundraising spaghetti dinner at the RV park, kitchen, and hall at no charge. And apparently it went off pretty well. Also, the Jack Clarkston Band scheduled to perform on the block party on 222. We were concerned that we may have to cancel because the, the individual who uh, pledged $600 fee for the band, re, uh, he decided he didn't want to pay it. Uh, he withdrew his donation. Rather than cancel, we were able to find another donor for the event. That donor wishes to remain anonymous. Uh, the board approved the donation, so please come. It's free to property owners, $5 for guests and visitors. Various non-alcoholic beverages, beer, wine will be available for purchase. One of the vendors uh, will be the funnel cakes, I believe. I can't recall offhand the rest of them. I'm not sure beer and funnel cakes go, but, you know. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, we still, um, we're extending, uh, we're extending the March 1st your uh, nominations for Volunteer Member of the Year. And please send them to Director Rihanna. She's going to coordinate that for us, okay? 
she will also be coordinating the Employee of the Year award. <coughs> okay, the Hunt has brought in only about $57,000 as of January. And this is considerably less than previous years. Um, at the, the last couple of years I was on the board, uh, we made between eighty dollars and $110,000 on it. So uh, it's down significantly. And Matt plans to restructure the hunt for next year and eliminate the voucher program. That was one of the issues. Uh, before the board initiated vouchers, our earnings were significantly more. Um, this is revenue we really can't afford to lose. Um, Dustin will be working with Matt, and his hunting and law enforcement experience will be valuable. What? Move your microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I sound really loud from here. Oh. <laughs> My mother always told me I had a permanent outdoor voice. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you for letting me know. Um, okay, finally, we're going to revise the way members can comment on agenda items. HB, House Bill 2840, actually controls open meetings for municipalities and governments and some HOAs. I haven't been able to find out which HOAs. So we're voluntarily going to follow the law. Um, it says that attendees may comment on each agenda item, either before or after, but the board uh, may determine when, how many, and for how long. So we're going to try three for three. Three people, three minutes. Because one minute is only long enough to tell, tell us your name. So we're going to expand it to three minutes and see how it goes. Obviously, nobody wants to spend four hours here. Um, we ask your cooperation and courtesy when your fellow members are up here. Um, we're all members of the same community, all property owners, and let's respect each other. Okay? You'll notice that there's no law enforcement in the building right now. Okay? I don't think we need it. Okay, thank you for bearing with me. Uh, on to the committee reports. Uh, do we have an airport representative here? <coughs> and where is that airport representative? Sam. <laughs> oh, the stand-up comedian of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Sam, would you please identify yourself to people who don't know you? Special effects. <laughs> I'm Sam Lark. I'm a uh, airport aficionado. I'm not a member of the airport committee. However, Joe Alakmus asked me to give the report. Uh, we have a new roof on the uh, main hangar, thanks to hail damage uh, insurance, and it really is completely weatherproof now. We have a little problem with the left side doors of opening the uh, main hangar. They're dragging at the top, and we're going to have to get a little bit of uh, welding work and a little bit of... Uh, uh, pull up on the upper part of the hangar where they're dragging. Right now it takes three men to open it and we need to get it so one man can open it. The right side is fine but the left side needs a little bit of work. The tin that was left over from removing the airport roof is stacked up there in four or five enormous piles. It is a huge amount of used tin it is going to be a harbor for rats and snakes, and uh, we need to get it off the airfield. Some people have said that it may be something that could be sold on eBay or, or some way. Uh, people may want it if they're putting in a barbecue restaurant, or a lot of farmers and ranchers might want it in order to build goat sheds or whatever with it. But uh, bottom line is, we got to get rid of it. And if we can get rid of it uh, and make a little money, great. Uh, if we can get rid of it and just get it hauled off for free, that would also be great. So those are the only three things we've got going right now. 
The airport runways are in wonderful shape. There's not a thorn on them anywhere, thanks to the inclement weather. <laughs> um, we, we, we did have thorns and grass. We now neither have thorns or grass uh, due to the drought and the freezes. Uh, I'd like to give you a weather report uh, as a meteorologist. The armadillo saw his shadow. Oh. And that means that we will have six more weeks of undeterminable weather. <laughs> okay, I, it's freezing one day, it's 80 the next. It's where you are. Thank you. Hey, Sam, hey, uh, get with Phil, because I know what, uh, with uh, hail damage on my roof, he was able to use some of that sheet metal. So this, he, this is really antique sheet metal. <laughs> I mean, this is 1920 vintage sheet metal. I've been out there in the first it's half rough, so It's rusty and ugly, but it is thick and strong, stronger than anything you can buy today. Talk to Phil. He may have some sources that we can sell it to. Okay, well, I, I have a name of a guy in okay. uh, Eagle Pass that'll, that'll take it. He doesn't want to pay anything, oh, he'll, but he'll haul it off. Okay. So anyway, it was a work in progress. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next is the architectural committee. Hi, Joe Lackness. I'm chairman of the architectural committee. A um, couple of things that we've had trouble with that we're trying to correct. Uh, if you're going to get a building permit, give us a couple weeks takes us a little bit of time to check things out and make sure that uh, everything's the way it's going to go the way that it should go. Um, to the winter Texans, when you go home, try to have somebody available to be watching your property to cut grass. We had a kind of a problem with that last year. Uh, includes cleaning up the brush and uh, the palm fronds and anything else that's laying around. And while I'm standing here, I'll give you a recycling report. Oh, okay. Halloween is not feeling well. Uh, we're getting ready to ship. Uh, we've got 40-some boxes to go. And um, truck should be in in the next week or so. And also, we need to um, we need to get the forklift repaired. We've turned in multiple work orders, and we're not getting it fixed. Um, there's a fitting on there that probably needs to be replaced, but that's up to, I guess, maintenance. Okay, I will uh, contact Phil on that and see what we can do for you. I know we put work orders in, and it, it, it may be, they may be trying to do something with it, but a week or so later it's leaking again. and. and it was getting sluggish in that the oil was probably getting low and it would, wouldn't go up correctly. Um, and I'm not sure where to fill it, but anyway. Okay. And I can show them where it's leaking if they don't know where it's at. I mean, it's, okay. it's actually fairly obvious. And it, in, in a week's time, it'll leave a puddle like this. Oh, it's pretty, pretty much. <coughs> okay, I'll, um, I'll make sure Phil gets the word. We'll see if we can take care of it for you. Okay, uh, golf committee. Katie's not here this morning. Okay, um, as a golfer, I just want to remind you of the Lost Morris Golf Tournament, the weekend of 13th, 14th, and 15th of March. Uh, the 13th is practice day, 14th and 15th is tournament day. They, um, it sounds like they're going to have quite a few teams this year, and um, this tournament fills our motel, puts people in the RV park, helps the uh, Brackettville community. Um, it's an interesting tournament. It's a lot of fun, and we hopefully uh, get a lot of golfers. Sounds, sounds like they're uh, doing a pretty good job. I did want to mention something, um, though, and uh, the it's for any golfers and people out here, a couple of things that the golf superintendent, um, Cash Letzinger, and pro shop manager, <laughs> Um, Helen Sargent mentioned to me, uh, number one, the cart paths are not walking paths. 
they're not bike riding paths and they're not pushing your kid in your stroller. <coughs> it's dangerous out there. Uh, we have amateur golfers. The chances of them knowing exactly where the ball go, is going to go is slim and none sometimes. Mm -hmm. So if you put yourself out there, you do so at your own risk. And um, I, I, the other day saw a lady out there pushing a stroller and people were teeing off. So for all those golfers and for all those non-golfers, you know, please let people know it's dangerous. Um, secondly, some of our, apparently a report, golfers were paying for nine holes and then playing 18 to 36 holes in a day. We're going to take action to stop that. That's basically stealing from the golf course. Mm -hmm. And the golf course struggles, all golf courses on HOAs, with few exceptions, struggle. And it's a perk that we all pay for. And when people do that, they're taking money from the association. So if you know of anybody that's doing that, please inform them that you know, that's inappropriate. And I will talk to the golf committee. We're always going to have them redo their bylaws. They haven't been done in probably 15 years. Okay. Consider that the golf report. <laughs> okay, preservation. I do have a question before I start. Will there be a community council report allowed? It's not on the list. Oh, you know what? That's probably our fault uh, between the two of us. Um, I have yes. one. I have one if you'd like. Yes. Let's uh, can you start do with preservation. Yes. Okay. First of all, preservation. Uh, Bill Peak, our president, uh, resigned as of January 3rd. And we uh, have a letter of appointment for two new directors, and I turned it into you guys today. Um, Sharon Gregor and H. N. Bitter has, uh, they have uh, both volunteered. He's a new member, lives just behind us, bought Carol Wentworth's house, lived here when he was 17 years old. So he has come back and he's very excited to get involved with the buildings. Um, and they're talking to the microphone. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Um, our current project is the cleaning and staining of the commissary, which is a huge building if you've never looked closely at it. It was, at one point in time, the largest building this side of the Mississippi. So that goes back quite a ways. Um, the Guerrero brothers will be starting that project soon. It's very expensive. We've been waiting patiently because that building really shouldn't go through another summer without getting properly cleaned and stained. <clears throat> We're also in the process of cleaning out the bottom of Schachter Hall. Uh, we had seven volunteers on February 17th. That seems to be the collection spot for whatever. <laughs> and so we're in the process of going through whatever, ditching what's not good, getting people who own something to get it out of there. It's a little embarrassing when THC, Texas Historic Commission, comes in. It looks like... I believe you meant to say Seminole Hall. I'm sure. Seminole Hall, correct. Thank yeah, you. Seminole Hall. We just finished that building with all several different projects of windows and stuff, and it's 100%, so we want to make sure that basement's cleaned out so that when THC, Texas Historic Commission, comes, we aren't embarrassed. We're working on that. We probably have at least one more work day to finish that. So thank you to the volunteers who helped us on the 17th. Um... We're going to start a new process of evaluating the buildings on an annual basis so that the board understands why we might make a recommendation for something and we can remember why we made a recommendation for something. Um, and it will be in a loose leaf notebook. Uh, Sandy Herman and I have been working on the evaluation of buildings that are plaqued, and, but nothing's done with the buildings that aren't plaqued. These have to be buildings owned by the fort. And we have a, a list of about 11 of them at this point. We have to make sure getting together with Russell and Phil Coburn that we have them all. Anything that's evaluated by the, the THC will be, we'll take a copy of that and put it in that file. And anything that's not, we will do ourselves with the same, fo same fo um, form. And that way you'll have the ability to pick up at any time in your area why Why is the preservation asking for $10,000 to do this? I think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. The other thing we'd like to do is we'd like to start the process of having an open house of one of our historic buildings 
every two or three months. I think there's a lot of people here who have moved here recently, uh, say in the past two or three years, and have never set foot in any of these historic buildings. And uh, we'd like to have make sure they're all cleaned up, ready to go, have a tour scheduled with one of the guys that knows about the building, can talk about it, take people through. Hopefully we can do this in conjunction with the Community Council, the Arts Council, the Garden Club, and we could have uh, cookies and punch and make it a day that you can meet your neighbors and learn more about the buildings. Um, the whole point of it, make our members become more familiar with the fort's historic building. <coughs> okay, and my last comment on this report is, contrary to popular belief, the Preservation Committee is not made up of a bunch of nerds. <laughs> but, but we do love our buildings, and we love to pass that on to those of you who haven't got there yet. Okay, so that's, that's uh, preservation. Okay, community council. I am happy to announce the community council has started a new chapter along with a new year. New officers were appointed in January. The members were made, the members made their selections and then we all sat around and swapped ideas about how to go forward. In February, we had just a successful meeting and we were happily joined by the board and spent quality time getting to know them and them us. Everyone came away happy and the feeling the future of Fort Clark Springs will be bright. Yes. yes. And we're real happy. Yes. The Community Council Board could not have asked for a better result. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, Community Council has gotten down to business. A Valentine's Day was put on. I'm sure many of you were, went to it. 67 people attended and $60 was just donated outright. Wonderful. Um, thank you to everyone who came. We loved it. Kudos to Maria and Steve Fox who cooked for two days. Lots of people volunteered to do everything else that needed to be done. People came to eat and stayed a couple of hours to visit with neighbors and old friends. Just like the old days. <laughs> Fort Clark Days is moving forward to a very successful happening. Donations are coming in large and small, thanks to those individuals out there pounding the pavement. Living historians will number around 100 to 125. All their needs are being attended to. Lots of volunteers will be working, some even from the base. So let's hope for great weather and a large crowd. Our fingers are crossed. As you know, the proceeds will go forward, will go toward preservation of the historic buildings, college scholarships for the graduating seniors, and other good works to benefit our community. Our new board and Allison and Natanya are currently trying to restore some of the community council activities such as movies, the ghostly tours, more dinners, possibly New Year's party, Texas Hold'em parties, and anything else we can think of to have fun and generate income. One more item, the, con the Community Council Board needs one more individual to be appointed to the board as a member of lar at large. If you are interested, please come to our next meeting, which is, somebody help me here, the third Saturday? Yes. 14th of March. The 14th of March? Second Saturday, yeah. The second Saturday, okay. I, I, gotta, I have to keep all these separate. That's okay, Linda, we know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, look at this. Community Council Community Council meetings are on the second Saturday yeah. <laughs> okay. of the month here at the board room. Please come and join the fun. Thank you. Sorry. No, it's... Thank you. I think I cheated my three minutes. Well, that's only... Never mind. <laughs> that, uh, my fault, and I haven't done an agenda in a couple of years, and I made a mental note at the last uh, board meeting to add that back in, uh, or at the Saturday meeting to add that back in, and then promptly forgot. Okay, uh, Old Quarry Society. Nobody from Old Quarry? Okay. Oh, also to preservation, um, would you please give us a list of your members? Oh, you, you, you have it. Is this, no, I'm sorry, architectural. Oh, uh, sure. Let's do your members. I'm sorry. Apologies. Architectural. You still out there? Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, old unfinished business, um, rules and regulations. Uh, I don't know if everybody has gone through those or not, but um, I w was able to finally get through them. And uh, again, as I said in my heading, we're going to um, table that until everybody has a chance to look through those. Because, like I said, there's a, just a ton of duplication in there. We need a better explanation of who's a member and what kind of a member. And there's that section in there that says that... Um, it says that if you um, are fined or if you fall behind in your assessments, you can uh, lose your membership. You don't. If you are a property owner on Fort Clark Springs, you, by law, are a member of FCSA. You may lose privileges, but you do not lose your membership. So we need to correct a few little things like that. The attorneys looked over it, and I think they probably just missed that one, or it was just... Uh, a type of so we're going to look through there, all of us. If necessary, we may do another workshop, a very brief one, to see if anybody else has come up now that they've been published. If anybody else has come up with some um, uh, ideas, I know um, <coughs> Helena McBride, who was on the committee uh, to do that, um, put that together, has some further suggestions as well. So we'll read it, and then we'll let you know, and then hopefully... Uh, since we have the annual meeting coming up, it may be after the annual meeting. We'll see. Additionally, Miss Vale contacted me, and she said if we were going to revisit, she was on that workshop committee. Mm -hmm. She would like to be put in there again to look okay. at them. Okay. Sounds reasonable. Okay, on to new business. Um, community council theater views, and I will let you um, know that we have um, not. Heard our bylaws. We have not discussed these items uh, before now. You're going to hear everybody's original opinions. We have taken no pre votes. Um, you're hearing it for the first time, like I'm hearing it for the first time. Just to let you know. Okay. Uh, community Council Theory Use. Get there. Okay, um, in summary, uh, they would like to um, keep the original contract of paying only $25 per movie event because they did send, um, excuse me, she did send me a summary of what they've uh, made over a two year period. Um, for the movies. It's, they hope it to be a fundraiser, but usually if, they're, if they break even, they're lucky. So for a two year period for movies, they've made $33.07. <laughs> but it's a service that our members enjoy. They love those movies, the kids love the movies, and um, our, we need to be better community friends and people love the movies, I and mean, charge for, um, for non-members, but um, they're asking that the previous terms of $25 rental per movie day uh, uh, be allowed instead of the, um, the amount that was uh, proposed by the former board members. So um, they will be having movies um, I think they have a movie schedule out there. Um, okay, that's a different schedule. Okay, so, huh? Okay, those are, that's the board meetings. Oh, no, okay. Absolutely. Yeah, movies for just about every, every month. And believe me, our, our members do like this. And when the movies were stopped, there was a big backlash from the membership. So I'd like to hear from, okay, Robert, your feelings, please. Um, I, the $25 seems reasonable because <coughs> movie licensing for schools is one of the things that I do for my school district. And it's a little different for the fort, but for a school district, you pay based on the number of students per in your population per year, so like our license for the high school junior high cost us $700 a year, and we can show unlimited movies. You can't do that with this particular type of organization 
you have to do it the royalties per uh, show. And um, so they are more expensive than what a school district pays. The $25, so that doesn't bother me letting them use it. The post theater is sitting there, wherever other location they're using is sitting there. But I would like to suggest that for June 13th, July 11th, and August the 8th, those summer movies, they not pay a fee at all. And this is my rationale. In 2011, I came here for family <coughs> vacation and then repeatedly came back over and over for the next four years until I bought two lots from the association that had been given back to the association. They had been vacant for four or five years. And what kept me coming back was the pool and knowing that someday there would be more things to do. So during hotel season, I think that June 13th, June 11th, or June 13th, July 11th, and August 8th, they are providing something for our guests who are spending money here to do. So that's why I would say let those be free of charge for community council mm -hmm. because they are helping to enhance the experience of Fort Clark Springs and maybe those people will stop and buy property someday mm -hmm. and pay memberships on a regular basis. So that's my input. Brianna? Um, I'm, I'm going to go with the $25 thing. Um, does community council, do they, y'all they, have a goal, like, when, like in your mind when you do a movie? Like, is there a certain amount that you'd like to make? I don't think if they've ever made enough to have a goal. Well, like, well that's what I'm saying. If for some reason we did have a goal, and then after, say, that if, if the fort kind of helps maybe bring more people in or something like that, once you make your goal, we get the 25, but then if you, once you've reached your goal, then maybe we can get a percentage of the profit above your goal. So, because it could, it could become something really big, or if it's a dud, you're not out anything but the $25. But that way, it looks like you have a lot more people wanting to push the idea, because you, the fork gets a little bit extra if, if y'all reach your goal. It's just my opinion. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's fair. It makes sense. Um, yeah, I... I'm not unopposed to any of these proposals. I, uh, my wife and I bought our home here in 2006. Uh, we've raised two beautiful daughters here. One's away in college right now and one's a sophomore in high school. And we love this place because it's a community. It's not a homeowner's association full of strangers. You know, there's always something going on on the weekends. You drive around on the golf cart and harass your friends. It's a good place to be. And, uh, the community council is making every effort to foster that, not just here on the fort, but in the entire community of Brackettville. So, yeah, I, uh, I don't think taking money out of their pockets, because those movie licenses are, they're very expensive. And, you know, the concessions aren't a huge thing, and sometimes they don't even cover them. So, yeah, $25 seems reasonable. I mean, that'll put a little... A little money in the fort's pocket to pay the electric bill, and yeah, I'm good with it. Okay, uh, finally, I'm also good with it, and I think the outdoor, not charging anything for the outdoor because they're outdoors. Right. They're not using an indoor facility. So it's uh, um, it's to the solely to the benefit of the membership and their guests, and possibly a visitor, and uh, I also think that 25 We'll cover the basics. We ask only that non-essential electrical items are turned off after you leave, and that it, the place it, you leave the place exactly as you found it. Because there was some complaint that there was a mess left. It turned out it was just a popcorn machine that wasn't adequately cleaned. So as long as that's the case, um, I. I think 25 is reasonable, and if we um, we will revisit it if and when any problems develop. So can I have a, can I have a, oh yes I okay is everybody any more comments from the table? Which uh, one other thing if when y'all open it up to begin set up for a movie if it's a mess when you open it will you please let the association know so that we can address that so yes. your heads aren't on the chopping block for something you didn't do. Good point. Anybody else? Which movies are the outdoor movies on this list of dates? 
June 13, July 11, and August 8. The ones I had circled. I seem to overlook that. Okay. All right. We will take um, three comments from the audience. Would you time these for me, Destiny? Please? Absolutely. Um, Lisa. She's the first one. Yeah, I think it was the first hand up. Lisa, would you come up? Please identify yourself and the unit you're from. Oh, and my unit. Yes. So everybody knows where everybody is. Where I live. Um, I'm Lisa Vale, Unit 27. Um, I'm no longer on Community Council, but I did um, oversee the movies um, previously. And I just wanted to clarify, well, for one, I'm all for them. But uh, I wanted to clarify some of the, the stuff. We cannot charge for the movies member or non-member, mm -hmm. because of the licensing restrictions. <coughs> the licensing for us is a, is, a, is a set fee. It's like 125 115 125 indoor, outdoor it's $250. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. So mainly we relied on donations for the licensing and that the money from concessions is what we used for, for the community for yeah, I lost the word. Scholarships. Um, the other thing is we usually run the movies up until October outside because it's too hot in the theater. You know, I know they've set June, July, 13, and I don't want to step on community council on what they've scheduled, but that's just the history of it. And I just want to say that I, I hope it continues because it's, it's a real fun for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Um, so there's the possibility of Linda O'Brien, uh, Unit 21. There is the possibility that six of them might be in and six might be out. Is that correct? Yes. And that the six that are out, there's no charge as far as the fort's concerned. So could, could we pick a, 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 I was just thinking of picking a number, like six times 25, 150. That would be the charge for the year, whether they're in or out. Uh, it's just a thought, yeah, um, and then it makes it affordable for them since, well, we might, you know, if you take the difference, we might, uh, what is, uh, instead of making $33, we may make 100 You know what I'm saying? That that was it. Uh, would would the 150 cover the uh, six times for electricity? That's my only comment. Okay, uh, third. Kathy, you were quick with the arm. Sorry, Charles, you're too old. <laughs> Hi, Kathleen Moore, Millennium 31. Okay. Um, like Lisa said, we cannot charge. We're a 5013C. We cannot charge. Anybody can walk in, right, and it's a donation. A lot of people will come with their kids, and it's a really good cheap night to have a movie right here in town. The other thing is, if we cannot sell our concessions, that means we're definitely going to have more of a deficit and we are going to go broke. Because we only make, the money we make is from concessions. That's it. Um, and the other thing is the same thing. Support it, have a good time, and we keep the movies going. And I appreciate what you people just all decided. Okay? Come to the movie and bring your kids. <laughs> Teenagers don't like going out with their parents. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, um, let's, can I have a, a motion, please, on the, we can, I think we can combine the um, $25 and the free during outdoor movies into one motion, perhaps. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, enter an agreement with Community Council to charge them $25 when they use the post theater to show movies. If their movies are outside of the post theater, there be no charge. A second motion. Okay, any further comment? Okay, all in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Opposed? Abstain? No. Okay, we have uh, three, four, and one abstain, therefore the motion passes. Yes, Okay, Albert, um, Fort Park Days venue requests. This is 